Walker. It is indeed a pleasure to have uh, with us um, Mr. Fitzgerald Hines, who is a member of Parliament for Laventil West Mova, where he has served for 12 years. He's also Minister of Works and Transportation, an attorney by profession. He has also served as Minister of State in the Ministry of National Security and the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Mr. Minister, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Bishop. It thank is good to much. see you. Last time I saw you was before um, the elections, yeah, uh, so it is my first time seeing you in your capacity as Minister. Yes, indeed. Uh, it looks as though we can work you a little harder because you you look pretty good for it. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you uh, for the, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I brought you in this morning because, as I said to our listeners earlier, we're talking about ghosts. The Unemployment Relief Program, an initiative of Prime Minister Dr. Eric Williams, involved uh, including persons who have three or four O-level uh, passes uh, in suggested skills, is a training program that was set up for them. The state went about implementing this for some reason or the other. Many folks feel that the time on and time off, which allowed for them to retool themselves, as it were, that has changed without anybody knowing. The intent original of the program, which is the URP, and the actual URP that exists today, is it consistent? To some extent it is. To some extent it is. From its inception, there was always a supposed to be a training component. Mm -hmm. And there has always been a training component, to a greater, but more often than not, to a lesser extent. Mm. So that the training component slipped seriously slipped over the years. When the program was first conceptualized, Dr. Williams recognized that there were some young men out of the steel bands in the communities because this gangster thing is not altogether new. Mm -hmm. uh, back in those days, in the 60s and so on, you had the steel band gangs, so to speak, and they played music. They were very talented, but they had some serious interband fighting and rivalry too and steel band clash. And some of them wound up with criminal convictions, minor, and in some cases, serious offenses, wounded, and so on. Guns were not as prevalent in those days as I understand it. And recognizing their social circumstances and that they had no, in a very, very, very uh, capital, uh, not only capitalist, but very colonial society as Trinidad and Tobago was at the time, mm -hmm. Dr. Williams realized that these young men may not have had any serious opportunity to earn legitimate income after these convictions because in those days you remember mr bishop a criminal conviction for obscene language interfered with everything in your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um dr williams conceptualized this program and as well to permit these young men rather than hang about to develop their own communities and so it was born it went on since then i think there was a bit of a misunderstanding on, behalf, on the part of the people, though. I don't think the nobility of Dr. Williams' thought totally seeped in. Mm -hmm. Over the years, it is my impression that a lot of people just saw it as a make-work thing and an opportunity to lahe and to just get attendees and do as little as you could for the money and, where possible, get more than you had supposedly earned in the program. Having said that, I can take you to many places in my own community in Laventil mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and its environs that I have seen with these eyes, and I'm sure it happened all over the country, where serious work, serious quality work, I mm -hmm. see some work still mm -hmm. standing strong today, built by these same persons in the URP. I had an uncle, he's now dead, he used to work in the URP, a serious tradesman he was, and maybe in between jobs he worked in this program. My old aunt, Auntie Vi, used to work as the water carrier in those programs and thing <laughs> years ago. And I have seen, and it still stands today, 50 years later, serious quality work. I think it would be... Love until and Gonzalez. So it has the degree, mm -hmm. it has potential, but of course, um, and to that extent it is consistent, but you are quite right, it was watered down and the original purpose was lost. And as human beings became more capitalistic and more individualistic mm -hmm. and more selfish and less community and less nationalistic, you'll find that it was about getting what you could get, stealing material, stealing time, wasting time, yes, it, just to get taxpayers' money easily. And that did nothing good for any of us. It would be woefully simplistic and biased. 
people want to not believe good work uh, has come out of the URP program. But I ask you for us to go back to the genesis so folks understand what it was. And I, and I know you were there for that time, and I know you have a good understanding of what it is. What has happened to the, what was it, three hours in the morning, a two-hour lunch break, and then they will be required to put in three hours of study in the afternoon, helping to 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 to, to get them fit yeah, for the workplace. To, to what make themselves is is that last part at all of getting any attention? Yes, it is. It is. In fact, very recently, um, maybe within the last three weeks, a group of women graduated from the uh, URP. Um, Persons who work in the program, yes. they engaged in different kinds of courses sponsored by the NESC, and um, they, they, um, several of them graduated mm. over the last, well, about three weeks ago, and that made me very, very happy indeed. And we have a manager in the program now, one Sharon Thomas, whose sole purpose is to accentuate on this training component. Mm. And as we speak, she advised mm. me up to recently, she has about 164 applications from women particularly in the program who would like training in different disciplines so that they can graduate out of the program, out of the program, because URP, as you know, means Unemployment Relief, Relief mm -hmm. Program. Relief is the operative. Yes, yes, yes. It is not supposed to be a lifelong thing. Mm. It's not a career thing. The pay is not as competitive as in the private sector. At otherwise. all. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's really just to give you an opportunity to breathe. And when you catch your breath, you move on to something more sustainable. You're listening to the voice of uh, uh, Minister Fitzgerald Hines, uh, who is our guest this morning, Minister of Works and Transportation. We are dealing with URP, but we're dealing with the genesis of it right now. In the area that you yourself so um, accurately articulated a moment ago, the abuse and so on, what is being done? We understand no society, I think most folks will accept, most, no society is going to exist without some form of social uh, allocation for those who are just be, you know, um, let, let's just say not skill sufficient to hit the marketplace. So we understand the need for this. What, where there is a great area of this quiet, however, Mr. Minister, is that cognizance of the abuse, as you yourself articulated, is not followed through with some remedial plan to wean on the best day, or just follow the dictates of the program and get people away from thinking that this is a lifelong thing. In addition to, while it is also um, accepted that this is done to control, hmm, let's just say, um, behavior that we don't want in some communities, so you get, a, you know, you get 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 the youths in, involved in this. It cannot be used as the begin all and end all to keep down crime, to keep um, down antisocial behavior. And we must get back to the moorings of the program. Hence the reason I started at that point. Yes, I do understand. The disquiet then is if we are all aware of it, as you yourself have said, what are we doing to deal with it? Well, we are doing a number of things. First of all, the number of persons who work in the URP would be less than 1% of the workforce of Trinidad and Tobago, which is probably now about 580,000 persons. Mm -hmm. So that you have a very small number of persons in that program. That's the start. What we are doing as a government and have been doing for many years is making academic and training, technical training opportunities available to every single citizen of Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. who is interested in that. So that you have secondary schools everywhere next to you, wherever you live, and you have access. We provide meals and breakfasts and lunch and transport. Those kinds of things support mm -hmm. for you to get to school. So that's the first mm -hmm. thing the government is doing. Education is a way out of it, and therefore we make it available all the way from early childhood all the way to tertiary state supported too, because it's all free and compulsory, early childhood and primary and secondary, mm. compulsory. And then tertiary level, gate supported, help. That's another loan program that supports mm. those who are involved in gate. That's one thing. In terms of technical vocational training, all the secondary, from the junior secondary and senior secondary days, you have a tech voc program inside of there where people can learn different technical 
vocational disciplines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is available. And then we have MIC, a training institution. We have YTEP. We have Serval. We have UTT came on board with, with a view of training people for industry. We have the John Donaldson Technical Institute, as is what once was now part of UTT. All I'm saying to you mm -hmm. is that we have designed a program where everyone who wants academic or technical training mm -hmm. can have access to it in Trinidad and Tobago. That's the first thing. For those who slip through the cracks... There are a number of programs, even inside of the prison, all the programs that are available from the National Training Agency, all the training programs are available inside of the prison, you know. Mm. For young men, when I was in charge of the, when I was in national security, as you alluded to earlier, we brought some of those training programs with a stipend inside of the prison. It used to be for the prison population that was not on remand, those mm -hmm. who were serving time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we brought it to the remand prisoners mm -hmm. because we realized some of them spent two, three, five years and seven years and more in there. Unfortunately. So we, 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 we have made training available. Mm -hmm. For those who don't make use of all of that, the URP mm -hmm. is available to do a little work. And inside of the URP, we still are now, as I told you, trying to accentuate this training component. So it's a work in progress, but you are up against the human mind. Mm. You have a lethargic mind. You have a mind because there are many people who started out in URP. I have a very, very good brother friend. He's listening to this program now. He told me he worked URP mm -hmm. in his earlier years in the 70s in Belmont, brother Kwame. He did a little stint mm. in URP, but then he picked himself up. He picked himself up, mm. and then URP became a thing of a very distant past, and he had a very productive life as a middle manager in the company that he retired from some time ago. So there are, there are many people who might have started out in the URP too and who have migrated on to bigger and better things. There are also many people who uh, will uh, you know, deal with the path of least resistance and those and who will find themselves that's the point, and that's what the point I was making. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You're up against a lethargic human mind sometimes. It's... it's perhaps even spiritual and psychological. There are some people who spent 30 years in URP. And let me explain this to you. You will want to know why. Don't think it's just $700 a fortnight he or she gets, you know. They have found very ingenuous ways to get $70,000 a month in some cases, you know. I see you, I see you have broadened your scope. You are now into mind reading because that's exactly where I'm going with the other question. We understand that there are creative ways, innovative ways to get more out of it than what this, uh, what is it, $700 per fortnight would actually be um, in, in, in including reporting names of, of, of people who are not there which is essentially one of the reasons we got here uh, for this day the whole question of ghost gangs and so on let me first ask you this question of nepotism and kickbacks what sort of mechanism is in place to deal with this and eliminate it early because it has been going on for a long time i know there are two not separate only, areas not only in the urp across trinidad, across and trinidad, trinidad. I, am on a sh I am ashamed but unafraid to tell you this morning that Trinidad and Tobago has demonstrated a, a proclivity towards corruption in ways that I find phenomenal. In other words, put it more simply, there are those who feel, and for good reason, that this country is generally has a tendency for corruption mm -hmm. at all levels at all levels of the society. Some people feel, and I am tending to feel like it is so endemic. It, it is amazing. Part so of this, the culture, unfortunately. This is, not, this is not confined only to URP. This is not confined. I heard Ozzy Warwick a while ago demonstrating that some employer wants to get as much profit as he can from mm -hmm. his business by mm -hmm. paying the workers less than one third of that which the law says is due to them. I don't know if that is true, mm -hmm. but if it is, doesn't mm -hmm. surprise me when you have people operating in a capitalist framework where they want to invest as little as possible and get as much as possible. The URP worker thinks he can give as little time and energy and sweat as possible and get as much as possible too. That is the essence of capitalism. Mm. And then there are those who come in over the last five years, I'll tell you truthfully, the big sharks, big, big, big contractors were allowed into the little URP program. There were big, big fishes in that small pond. But the pond is not so small. It, it spends, like last fiscal, it was about $475 million yep. for the program. Yep. This year it has been cut. 
substantially. And of course, you know, we, we, we try to work with it. But the point I'm making is that the general laws of Trinidad and Tobago, the anti-corruption laws and all of that apply equally to the URP as it does to every other The Prime Minister systems. made that point when he challenged the nation for everybody to look at themselves because it is not just government institutions, it's private institutions, it's the way we go about, it's the hours we steal, it's the way we uh, tea for, eat our food as it were. And, and, and so, so, so I understand and agree with that. There is the question, however, aware of the avenues that's aiding in corruption. Everyone speaks of the widespread corruption and political manipulation of the URP program, yet after this admission, no one is charged. No one is jailed. Well, no one is even charged. You must be uh, charged before you are jailed. Question is, but the millions fretted away in the in, in the program through the skullduggery, you and I would know that word, through, through, through the dishonest um, ways, manipulation of many people. Why is it we don't hear of anybody being carted off in jail, including those who walk in there and make big money from it, operating these ghost gangs? Well, the whole number of issues you have raised there. When I, I, in my last budget presentation last week, I read for the Parliament's record at least four cases where the internal auditors in the Ministry of Works and Transport mm -hmm. found fraudulent, apparently fraudulent behavior. Yes, I, I say apparently you, I because mm -hmm. it now is for the police to investigate and charge for fraud if they get that evidence. Mm -hmm. But there was enough from the reports that the files reflected and for me to report to the parliament in there. So I personally am very acutely aware of the problem and I am doing personally, look, we have a program manager, we have deputy program managers. I have spoken to them ad nauseum mm -hmm. about these matters and sought their determination and commitment to eradicating them from the program. I make the point, you're really hurting your country by doing that. There's no productivity and money is being spent. At mm -hmm. the end of the year, we have nothing to show for it and the money is spent. Everybody loses. Nobody benefits. So I have done that. One of the things we have done as well, because we've seen we're not only in the ERP, poor procurement of services and goods, mm -hmm. contracts for these services and goods. By virtue of weak procurement mm. procedures, a lot of bad business went on, yeah? So we have tried to strengthen the procurement process. The parliament has passed procurement legislation, which should be after full debate and consideration, not a panacea because human beings will find a way around everything, but it will substantially improve the way we procure goods and services, eliminating for the most part some of the things that would have gone on in the past. We have introduced a system of centralized procurement in my ministry, mm -hmm. and wherever we go to do business with the URP, we're going to be doing it in accordance with the standards of the centralized procurement process, not how it was done before. That's one of the things I am doing. It is more closely monitored by the permanent secretary mm -hmm. and the administration of the Ministry of Works, the core ministry, as opposed to the URP as a division where a lot of looseness from what I read into the parliament record became mm -hmm. easy to arrange. I was very encouraged when I heard you um, single out four areas of inconsistency, and I was waiting to see something happen. As well, yes, I did tell you as a citizen and mm -hmm. the parliament that if matter will be sent to the Public Service Commission and to the, 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 the police for mm -hmm. further investigation, and that is being done. And I hope some charges would be laid if the police finds, as the auditors find, found, sorry, that something was wrong about that which happened. In addition to that, the URP over many years was responsible for maintenance. That's a concept. Cleaning areas, mm -hmm. degrassing, desilting, maintaining, cleaning up the areas. We realized that that was largely unmeasurable. It was easy for a 10-man gang to have one person representing it on mm -hmm. any day. Four levels of supervision, the supervisors involved in it too. You have people signing off as though a whole gang was there, mm -hmm. or team as we call it now. We mm -hmm. moved away from this whole uh, degrading gang. concept of gang. And it's easy for a supervisor, a coordinator, somebody in the program who has the responsibility to protect your tax dollar, to mm. join in the game and sign off and say everything is perfect out there. The files I read in the parliament actually showed where public servants signed off on 
contracts that were purportedly conducted or executed when in fact there was Nothing absolutely done. no work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is there's where you confront you 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 have to confront with the human spirit and his deception and dishonesty, very human. And then you have laws and when he acts outside of that it is measured against the law like the procurement law mm-hmm. and then he's held to a standard and therefore held to account. So what we have done Recognizing that this area of maintenance allowed for so much of that kind of activity, we took a policy position that we are going to use the URP for construction, measurable block, concrete, steel work. Removing the ambiguity out of it, yes. Mm -hmm. What you do. It is. Right? So you can't beat the grass on top of the head and then tell me to go back last week. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Give me so something that I can One of the things measure. we mm-hmm. are doing is insisting on measurable work now. So we have work going on in the communities. It could be measured in terms of blocks and so on over a period of time. And that's one of the things we are doing to try to cut out this. And we leave maintenance of the communities up to CPEP, who so far has been doing a good job in that regard. It is 32 minutes after 11 o'clock. My guess is uh, uh, Minister Fitzgerald Hines, who is the minister. Minister of Works and Transport. Um, You know, you make a good case for the recognition and some of the initiatives put out there. How do you respond to the question many have raised that lower on the chain, the area of bad men get contracts as appeasement and to remove this, um, this allocation through URP gives up some modicum of street peace and political patronage? How do you respond to that this is, in fact, in its own way, a wonderful political I accommodation? Can, I can almost boastfully tell you that in the URP, that has been a thing of the past for the last year. As a matter of fact, we have issued, as far as I'm aware, one or two contracts mm-hmm. so far in the URP. And that was done in accordance with my ministry's centralized procurement process. Mm. Um, We have other works to be done. What we are trying to do is to bring back the good old, you know, you you, you know, you know, this. uh, you bring back that good old loving community feeling. I have a job right now that we discussed yesterday at my office for a particular area in my community. It is our when the discussion came up, it's easy to issue a contract. But then that has its own problems in those communities. Somebody's angry with the person or jealous of the person who got it and and all the procurement issues that I might have alluded to a while ago. So we decided we're going to mobilize the young men in the area who are interested in their own community, speak with them, and I've seen this happen in other communities so far in the past year. They respond to a serious message. They Mm. understand. And once they realize this contract game is not available to them anymore, they settle down behind it. And what we are focusing on is need. This is a community. This is the drainage issue here. It needs 100 or 200 feet of box drain. This is your community. This is your opportunity to fix your community so that your aunt, your grandmother, the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. And let's get to work. You know, so we say... You come out at 8 in the morning, you work until 2 p.m., 1.30 p.m., and then you can go off to the MIC or you could go off to the NESC. And you see, because that's one of the we're areas. We're returning to our moorings. Yes, the, the, the moorings are re- really important, and that's why we started there. I mean, they are in the case of Arawak, for instance, I mean, they pay folks, what is it, 16 to $22 we're talking about. Uh, uh, not a particular exclusive skill set is necessary to work there. 16 or $22 is above what they're going to make on the URP uh, program. And I wonder if there's coordination, if there's, first of all, Training towards the, the the needs of the country of industry uh, that, yes. uh, of industry yes. yes and in this case if we had people who understand that sixteen to twenty two dollars is way above what you're making it being out here are we in you, fact you, opening you, these options to them saying you these are, things you, exist you are indeed a beautiful mind that is exactly what we are doing I told you that the UTT The University of Trinidad and Tobago was designed with industry in mind. Mm. It trains people to meet the needs of industry. The NESC, the National Energy Skills Corporation, has a serious training component. You Mm. will recall just about a year ago, 
as soon as I became the member of parliament, I gathered over a thousand people. I advertised it on radio stations, on Facebook. We went around with microphones and we encouraged people. They filled mm -hmm. out that center, the mm -hmm. Laventil Technology yes, Center. Yes, that was the job fair. We had UTT, thing, yes. NESC, mm -hmm. everybody there. And we showed them mm -hmm. that day in diverse ways. You can start with nothing. You can do a certificate program, a diploma program, an associate degree program, all by adding another year on, and then a degree program, and off you go into industry. That is available, Mr. Bishop. Mm -hmm. It is happening now. We had about almost a thousand persons who indicated interest. I must tell you, so far from the figure I got, about 17 of them have matriculated into programs at the UTT. Others are at different stages of their preparation for further matriculation. So it is actually happening. Mm -hmm. It is happening. There is and the opportunities are there. And I say to them all of the time, in the words of Bob Marley, in the abundance of water, only the fool is thirsty. And there's a tremendous amount of water wrong. So you have mm -hmm. hit the nail squarely on the head. Want to get into one other area here. There is a, the question of the amount of time you can spend, uh, the amount of time you are eligible for employ uh, through the URP. Um, that is one of the ways of, of, of getting rid of people abusing the system. They, 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 uh, if I recall very well, and you can clarify it for me, there is a specific duration you can keep being employed, though, on a rotation basis in, oh, in the uh, URP. And if that is the case, how come we have some people who have who made it like 30 years and so on? Yeah, I yeah, mean, you know, yeah. if, if, there is, if there is a period under which you can spend working for URP, but after that, yeah. Nothing has happened. Uh, how come they can stay there for 30 years? Well, well, actually, you have two components. You have persons who are in that program, monthly paid, doing things that are required to be done constantly, accounting and different things, mm -hmm. um, and HR issues, and, you know. Um, and then you have persons who work uh, on a fortnightly basis, who just come into the program, maybe work one fortnight or two or three and then move on or there's a break and then they come back on. Yeah, that's how that works. So you have two sets of persons in mm. there. But then there are persons who stayed in the program on that rotational basis for many, many years. Low energy, I suspect, if I may not be, I don't want to be pejorative, but they, they, they just didn't see the need to pick themselves up as individuals. One of the reasons on. I ask you to be here is because I know as our parents would say, you don't put water in your mouth. It no, is no. what it is at except, the end of the day. Except literally when my lips go dry. <laughs> like, like right no, now. Yeah. <laughs> in the area of exploring potential solutions, can we look at the, sort of like what happens in the U.S. unemployment approach? In other words, you were given um, yes would you, uh, something to do a, 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 a you know, like a URP. I mean, you're given thing. a time um, at the after you finish your lunch hour, for instance. You're given three hours every day where you should go out and 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 and, and try to get job in the private sector. But you must bring proof that you have tried. Yes. Absent that, yes. you are thrown off after a period of time. But I like that. I like that. That is actually forcing people along exactly. the right path, exactly. and it's something that I'm quite prepared to give consideration to. But must admit that that does not now exist. Mm -hmm. That does not now exist. But of course. You know, we've put in some new leadership in the program, mm. and there's a new ethos. I'm telling you this without boasting. I'm a very hard taskmaster. I'm very focused on the issues you are raising here today. And I think all who work with me understand full well that that's not the game that I'm up to. And therefore, I'm driving it down. And I'm getting support. Mm -hmm. And in fairness to the people of my community in Laventil, in fairness to them, something good is happening. We are seeing green shoots of hope in every way. Like I was reading the papers this morning about the crime issues in Laventil. Mm -hmm. We are seeing that it is on the decline, serious crime. Some of Laventil I'm definitely going to pick up with you, but at the end of the day, those who think that we're being harsh when we say show that you have tried to get yourself a job or we will not re-employ yeah. you in a URP reminds me of what one politician said. Can't remember who it is. You probably will remember. He said you cannot permanently help a man. You cannot help a man by doing for him what he should be doing for himself. Quite, quite so. And at the end I of the day, sometimes that. you've got to use the tough love in order to move people off. I agree with that. So and you see, you see, if money is easily available through corrupt means in the URP, mm -hmm. they are going to stay there because they are on the gravy mm -hmm. train. That is why I'm it. encouraged when so you say when that it is stopped. So when we administratively mm -hmm. 
from policy directions from the cabinet and through me as minister, when we tighten up the procurement mm. process, when we cut out this loose issuance of contracts, when the money is no longer easily available, then naturally the human being will have to find other ways. You'll have to look otherwise because it's just not available here. The budget is being cut, mm. you see? Um, and therefore, and as I said, the maintenance thing is now a thing of the past. But I must tell you and the country this as they listen to us this morning. The ghost gang business mm -hmm. cannot happen without the participation of the individual who is the card holder. We pay through a, a debit card system mm -hmm. in the bank. So all salaries are sent to the bank and the worker he has a credit, a debit card that he accesses this money. He can take all out one time mm. or he can take it in parts mm. as he sees, he or she sees fit. He knows the PIN number for that card. Now, this is not the gang leader, but the individual. The individual worker. who works because mm. there are names, you see. Mm. What is, it's two ways this thing is happening. I can say we have a team on John Street in Marabella. Mm -hmm. I hope there's no John Street in Marabella. I'm just giving you an example calling names. X Street in Toko or in Carnage. Mm -hmm. And I present a list showing that there are 10 people on the steam when in fact there's no one out there. But at the end of the day, the payment has to go to an account in the bank for each of these 10 people. Mm -hmm. And there will be 10 people holding these cards. They probably are employed as security officers, nurses in the public service, because we've seen that otherwise. But they allow their names and ID cards to be used in the scheme. And they are quite prepared because they're not really working for it and suffer no loss to take $300 out of the amount. Out of the and, the, mm -hmm. and the schemer, the crook, he now gets the other four hundred dollars if that happens a hundred times he comes away with a hell of a lot of money more than you and i so the individuals involved in the program mm. they have so what we need to be doing is cleansing and i now put a, i've put a system in place where using nis numbers mm. we will be able to have the nis people see whether this nis number is appearing urp mm. on a urp list and at the same time as a nurse in the Port of Spain General Hospital. They will assist us in mm. telling us whether this person is duplicating and there we'll see evidence of ghosts and we will deal with that. I actually saw where persons who I know to be working, otherwise names appeared on the list. I actually saw that mm -hmm. and took action against that just about a year ago too. Bracelets time, uh, some new ones. <laughs> because yes. you know, sometimes So this I... so-called gangster who is running the thing, he can't mm -hmm. do it without the complicity and the participation of other people. And this is where we need proper supervision to make sure when a team is on X Street in Karanaj or in Marabella or in Toko, they are actually out there. And one of the ways we will do it is by seeing that work is going on on that drain on that driveway, on that roadway, uh, and that retaining wall, as I have told you a while ago. Not only in that Measurable area, work. yes, not only in that area, but in many others, measurable um, 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 let, um, needs to have people uh, show that they are in fact being held accountable is necessary. You take the information, you pass it on to the police, whether it is the police or the DPP, somebody's got to put some urgency in this because I believe, I believe in a shot across the bow. Indeed. And the first time you have one or two people held to account and sent to prison if necessary, if found guilty, um, the sooner we do that, the faster we send a message to the citizenry. I could not agree with you more. I'm thirsty for it actually. I am, uh, yes, I am passed some pastors. The 11.44 in the morning, the Minister of Works and Transportation is my guest. That's the Honorable Fitzgerald Hines. We are talking about uh, the ghost and the URP program. I think basically we have covered that. I want to go into a couple of other areas that's on your welcome. portfolio, sir. Uh, proposal submitted by the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Social Welfare Association reportedly recommends increased speed limits. This we also have heard from many other people. Has the current speed limit worked effectively to continue as is or has any justification been presented to seriously consider requests for an increase in speed? I think it worked effectively in the sense that we have seen a reduction in the fatal. There is a clear, there is clear evidence of a reduction in fatalities since we implemented 
the Indy speed Indy kilometers, device yeah. detection device because mm-hmm. the speed limit did not change. It always was so, what it was. It was our ability to detect speeding and to mm-hmm. prosecute it more effectively that brought about all of the the discussion yes. and the and the re- reduction that we we have seen in the evidence. So. In that sense, it has worked. Mm -hmm. I have noticed, though, myself, and I've had a thousand Mm -hmm. reports, that uh, it has started to wear off, and they have started speeding again, Mm -hmm. breaking the limit. Now, Mm -hmm. that has to do with enforcement. Yes. That has to do with the police being out there night and day, unpredictably. More guns. Yes, and therefore more uh, speed guns. Mm -hmm. And we are in the process, as I speak to you, of procuring several more. I've heard that for some time, sir. Uh, no. I must ask you, I thought... Um, no, it's, it's happening. It's, uh, it's it is a, happening. Yeah, it's actually mm-hmm. happening. We want to improve on the devices that we now have, and we have to be very careful about the specifications. Yeah, because at the end of the day, that's a very good point you made. And the, the predi- price as the well. predictability. There is a cost to it, uh, but, you know, some of the vehicles I want to see are the vehicles, the police vehicles that I equip, that the, 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 the one police officer in a hidden spot in one vehicle is against this elaborate setup they have where yeah, and that's, uh, that's, you can that's, see that's, them that's, a mile coming yeah, off. Yeah. And, and that's, where we, that's where we're heading now. That's We want to improve the technology. Mm. I just told you that. So we're looking carefully at that. And But um, you have not gotten representation that has convinced you that you need no, to increase your speed. I, I said from the day I had uh, brought brought these guns to bear legally in the country, I said that the matter was under review and it continued to be under review. And I can tell you truthfully that we have, long before this police bulletin that you just read there, we, we have been collaborating with the police, collaborating with our traffic management department in the Ministry of Works, collaborating with all stakeholders. And in that review process, we have come to the position that we will make some changes very shortly. Mm-hmm. And that is, as I speak to you, drafted. So okay. we are expecting to make some changes. It will be premature to announce them mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. But before doing that, I had to as far as was practicable, ensure that the state did all that it had to do to ensure that the roadway and the safety gadgets were all in place. Mm. Because if you open it up to 120 kilometers an hour on the highway, but you don't have safety barriers to stop crossovers, Mm. you are inviting fatalities. So before Mm -hmm. we... Resi- before we relented to the urge to improve the speed limits, we had to make sure that we did the road markings, mm-hmm. put up more speed systems. Mm. And as we speak, we've just gotten um, a consultation process complete where we're putting in sp- spot speed cameras mm-hmm. so that we improving the technology on any given place. We can have a camera and once you go past that, beyond the speed limit, it takes your picture, it Which flashes, makes the and you sense, get a yes. ticket later mm-hmm. on in the, in, mm-hmm. in the mail, mm-hmm. as they do in other countries. Yes. So um. to do that, we had to improve our record keeping at the licensing mm. office, make that more credible, more trustworthy, because you had issues down there with poor records and yes. tampering with records. So before you do the thing you asked me about, you had a whole host of things mm. to be done in order to prepare for the new move. So that the state will be in a position where it can open the floodgates a bit, knowing that all of the safety measures are in place and the detection measures and the prosecution measures are in place before you open it. Infrastructure must take uh, must must, must must take precedence. Patients I detected in the society, Mm -hmm. but as Mm -hmm. the minister of works and transport, with the responsibility Mm -hmm. to save lives and to save money and to save Mm -hmm. time. I had. I have far more to consider than the average fellow who thinks 50 kilometers an hour is too slow. One of the things you have to consider is the whole question of what is costing the nation from a productive standpoint when it takes you three, four, five hours to get to work. You had a police officer who had advised you on something that I actually like because I've seen it work. For some reason or the other, there were a number of people who said that um, logistically we're not prepared for it, which is to say have odds and even numbers uh, coming into the city on on, 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 uh, rush yes, hours. Yes. I have seen that to work, but there are many people who argued against it. Yes. Uh, the infrastructural uh, redesign necessary to do that, which is to say areas for people to park and ride yeah, parking, and stuff like that. Parking. What is being done in that area? Well, that 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 is a matter that is, well, you know, that's, that's a work in progress. We mm. certainly have to improve parking facilities in the major towns and cities around yes. the place to permit mm. that. 
Um, we have to improve our public transportation network as well, PTSC, mm. the maxi taxi operation. All mm. of these mm. things have to be done. So it's not an overnight stance, right. you know. Right. Um, and it's years of lethargy that we're trying to step up. And some of the questions I ask is because I want to uh, be comforted or have the audience comforted that we are looking at alternative ways of approaching this. Yes, some of them fact, I ask is not because I expect in one year all of this to suddenly turn. It does not happen like that. But I need that. to know that, in fact, we are looking at that. Indeed, them. indeed. And you know we looked at a mass transit mm. system recently. And because of the economic circumstances yes. in which we are now put, we had to put that on the back burner. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, mm. you know, so there are a whole host of things happening. I am confident that we are headed in the right direction. But most of all, mm -hmm. we are back to the issue of the human mind and the human spirit. Individuals have to understand mm. and take responsibility for themselves and the other mm. people in Trinidad who we are supposed to love. You can't just go driving. Last evening, I'm going home. And I, I, I just said as a young man, I can't tell you who the driver was. But from the, from the way the car was maneuvered, I formed the opinion that it would have been some young, unthinking man. Young man. Somebody's going to call you ages. Okay, I, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I might be wholly wrong. Might be an old woman. Yeah. Ooh, you know? You're getting deeper in trouble. It, it, just no, say. no, it might be. I, as, I, as I admitted to you, I can't be sure who right. the driver was. But uh -huh. listen, mm. we're going up the saddle road. A car about 25 yards ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And this car is overtaking around that winding road and actually overtook around the bend. Yep, yep. I've seen it too many times. Just sped past at more times. than 50 mm. kilometers an hour. Too many times. And, 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 and that is where a large mm. part of the problem is. It's just human bad behavior. Well, and human then, bad behavior. Then that you come can... to the question now of enforcement. Because in That's some right. societies, enforcement mm -hmm. is what curtails bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Catch them, mm -hmm. prosecute them, jail them, lock them up. So we are introducing mm -hmm. a penalty point system. We're going to parliament yes. within weeks. Because the cabinet is now considering a policy document mm. for a penalty point system where Working. you would lose mm -hmm. your driver's permit if you accumulated penalty points over time. You got so 10 points, for instance, and your reckless driving is two and, your, yeah, um, and yeah. stuff like that. You that's add up coming, and you get to 10 That's coming to parliament now. It's, yes. before, it's, it's for, for the cabinet. Once the cabinet agrees, we are gone. We're going to be looking. The cabinet. We're going to be looking for that, Mr. Minister. In I a got, few I, days. I, I got a couple of P's I need to speed, pass at you. Uh -huh. red, red light. Red light. Yes. Um, Disobeying um, the red light, yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, or moving on, or well. accelerating your moving speed when violations. you see yellow. You see yellow when you start speeding. Yes. Yes. Yellow means stop. Yeah. Slow down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I got a couple of pet peeves that I've got to raise with you. Uh, Minister welcome. of Works and Transportation, um, Minister Fitzgerald, the Honorable Fitzgerald Hines is my guest. And uh, one of my pet peeves, uh, I've got to put it into two parts here. <clears throat> it's costing the nation a whole lot of money when it comes. And this is the question of our roads not lasting. The mixture that is used to lay our roads. Is, is, is there a question of um, folks cutting back and not making the right mixture while why roads that are paved just start to disintegrate on their own? I mean, you know, is there a reason for that? The edges start going away, going away, going away, and before you know it, edges. it has crept all the way in the center of the road and cracks and Not and just even. the edges. What is I with drove that, along sir? Park Street yesterday, mm -hmm. and it was a horrible experience. As mm -hmm. Minister of Works, I no longer see faults. Eh? I look for faults. So I'm looking for faults on my roads these days. Drive with me at some point, year. yes. <laughs> and I, it was a horrible, not a pothole, not one pothole right. along Park Street between Richmond Street where I entered and Charlotte Street. But the mm. road is wavy, yes. wavy, yes. wavy, swells and yep. bulges. So it looks as though, I don't know if it's the heavy vehicles passing on it, warping it. I don't know if it's that in combination with the heat. I don't know if it is the poor quality mix that went down in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's not only about the edges. And mm -hmm. yes, to answer your question, there has been instances of poor and shoddy workmanship Mm -hmm. that has led to the loss, millions of dollars of loss, Cutting as costs, you have just yes. put to me. Yes. And therefore, I, mm -hmm. since I took office, I am boasting now, although God created us, such that our hands are not long enough to pat our backs mm -hmm. comfortably, and our feet face forward so you can't kick yourself behind. The moral of that, of course, is that you can't be too self-praising nor too self-critical. Yes. But I want to boast I have insisted on quality, and every job that I have done so far has been done with quality in mind. Mm -hmm. I am insisting. Mm -hmm. So we do road te soil testing before you start. We 
assess what you have to do. We issue the contract and we're going to test after to see if we get what you were paid for or to be paid for. Mm -hmm. We have also lengthened that period of um, what you call like a warranty. I a guarantee, yes. Yes, yes okay. that mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. of uh, performance. Yeah, performance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. guarantee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have lengthened that from mm -hmm. six months in our contracts. Now we're going to a year. Yes. So, yes. And then recently you would have noticed, if you did, at Queen's Park West, Heading into Ellerslie area, going through Anderson Terrace. Yep. A contractor working for TN Tech, laying some fiber optic cables, dug up my road, Ministry of Works Road, and did it over in a very ungainly, mm. unwholesome manner. It was not just black potholes started showing up before you could turn. You and know it. Yes, I know I it very took well. Action against mm -hmm. it, and I insisted that it be done. And I saw mm. that they redid it about two weeks or a week and a half ago. I'm watching it again. I'm watching it. And I'm now saying to the officials in my mm. ministry, we have some standards. We are collaborating with WASA because mm. WASA. <laughs> you know I'm coming to them. You know yeah, I'm coming to we them. We have collaborated with TN Tech, mm -hmm. with the utilities mm. like Flow and T um, Blink and B Mobile, and they. We are now collaborating regularly with them with a memorandum of yes. understanding. When you cut the nation's roads to do your work, we will know that you want to cut it well in advance. And when you cut it, you will repair it in accordance with our standards. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, we will do it at your expense. Oh, no, 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 that's that's the area because I get the feeling that somebody passed my notes on to you, Mr. Mr. Minister. You must have some information on me. I don't know. Um, the Water and Surge Authority, one, 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 such, one such body, would get in there and do their work because you must do the work. You must yes, do infrastructural yes. maintenance. We understand that. But when they are finished, I get the feeling they merely take the asphalt and drop it in the space and hope that cars will compact it for them. Yeah. And you are expected to have a smooth surface. It does not happen. Doesn't. And everywhere they pass, you can tell. You also get the feeling. I mean, I had the occasion of being in Maloney not too long ago. And um, I, when I first came back here about a year and a half ago, I passed there, and there is where they did some work and destroyed a really good road. Left it like that. It is still like that. But whenever they come and do work, what you find, not just in, in, in Maloney, just about anywhere, you can tell when Wasser was here. Absolutely. You can tell when somebody was... You can see the scars. It's not just the scar. If it was the scar, it's all right. I can probably live with that. What I cannot live with is it. that you just put it there, yeah. and then the next thing I have is sinkhole. Yeah. And it, it makes no sense. Well, let me tell you how this works in practice. First of all, there has to be proper compaction. So when you Precisely. fill it back with the fill, yes. uh, gravel and sand, and you fill it back, you need to leave it for a period of time you, for let it, it to come back. Because mm -hmm. if you pave on top of that loose mm -hmm. material, when that sinks, the road will also sink. As so there will be time. a time between completion of the job and compaction proper compaction before you pay. But Mr. Minister, you are clear on that. What is wrong with the engineers the engineers understanding that or the, the, the work crews understanding that? No, the, the contract, very a lot of the work you see on the road, yes. whether it's TN Tech or WASA or so, it is private contractors then doing it for them. Then after a while, and what we need too, to do is pull the contracts from them ever getting one if they no, continue that's with this. The, that's what I have threatened publicly. doesn't make me a popular minister. I said it. Not a popularity and it was contest, widely man. reported. That's mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, mm. they they want to maximize profit. So if they could leave the road like that and go away, and then mm -hmm. leave it for the Ministry of Works to fix, and so we're paying the state paying <laughs> twice for the same work. Yes. then that's fine. Mm. And they run off to the bank with their big money. Mm -hmm. So we are now taking a view on this. And I tell you what, drainage is another critical area. And I can tell you the back roads, St. Joseph Road, that mm. you and I are familiar with. Now Bertie Marshall Boulevard. Mm -hmm. They have paved that many times over many years, mm -hmm. but then it became dilapidated in yes. quick time. The experts tell me that roads could last 15, 18 years, as in Miami, as in other parts of the world, if they are properly done. But most if of all, done. if drainage is attended to, because water mm -hmm. is the asphalt, what termites is to wood, and what a certain political party is to our treasury. But I know you don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The point don't, be, is, don't be too sure yeah, of that. Yeah, but, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. but the point is, we have to deal with the drainage issues. That point door junction in Labre that everybody is now talking talking about they're happy with the way we have done it. Mm -hmm. We did soil mm -hmm. testing, as I told you, and discovered it was not the pull of the pitch lake that was really causing that 
Boca Savo Road. Mm-hmm. In that point or junction to go around to Labre. Most people mm-hmm. thought, I always thought, I always it thought. had to do with the natural phenomenon of the pitch pulling mm-hmm. itself back in. Mm-hmm. Some They call that pitch outgrowth. So did the technocrats call that. It is only small in small part that the larger problem there was a pool of water had gathered below that be the of surface. Mm-hmm. So when we tested, we found that. We extracted the water, and then we developed all the drainage in the area to avoid water from accumulating below there again. Mm -hmm. And on that basis, we feel confident that the pavement we have put, and I don't mean the place you walk on, Mm -hmm. the paving, the road surface Mm -hmm. is called pavement, Mm -hmm. that will now last us a lot longer there. As against sidewalks. As opposed to, as (laughs) as against sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And that is the kind of quality Mm -hmm. of work we need to be doing everywhere. I am about to pave the Western Main Road, which needs attention. But before I did that, I kind of started that six weeks ago. But before I did that, I called Wasa. We, my officials called Wasa, said, Wasa, we are going to be doing that's that right. road. That's we right. want it to last us X amount that of years. That is the coordination that's and needed. And therefore, yes. mm-hmm. you go down there and see mm-hmm. what you need to do. Wasa told me on Friday gone that in, in by Tuesday coming, mm-hmm. I'll get a sign off that they have done what they're supposed to do. And now I'll go ahead and do the paving, knowing or expecting that Wasa would not interfere with my road and it's smooth pavement in any unforeseen. It, it goes out to term. anyone. If you who have a must major rupture digging, of a yes. line down then you there, have no choice. Then you have no choice. But, but if, if you take happened, the time and you correct it and you do it properly, yes. So it would be one seamless. of the things Wasa mm-hmm. did a couple of weeks ago was to look to see where they had really poor main lines to change them out before we went in. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. of course, if that happens, in terms of the rehabilitation of it, it will be done in accordance with a standard that we have set, or we may do it and you pay for it in accordance with our memorandum of understanding. There should be a place where all the utilities and anyone who, i.e. the cable company, anyone who must dig, there must be a place where they go to. So at least there is an understanding of who is proposing to dig and you try to put them all in a in a sort of frame, framework time. Coordinate activity. Yes. Yeah, so yes. if you're going to dig now, you don't come yes. back to weeks later and dig again and dig again and dig again. That calls for intellect. That calls for professionalism. That calls for organization and management. Something that has been too sadly lacking in our country. Or prohibitive penalties for those who uh, don't adhere to it. Uh, Mr. Minister, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, There are a lot of other areas. I had to skip through the last couple of areas because we have uh, exhausted what we have here. But there are a lot of other uh, uh, areas we can explore on this, and uh, and I'm sure we will. Um, I thank you so much for taking the time to, to come in this morning and spending the time with us. The pleasure was indeed mine, as indeed it was on the last occasion. Thank you very much for the opportunity to have met with you again and to speak to your very wide listenership. Good luck and God bless. Let us all work and let us all pray. It's not only my work or your work. I noted when I came in here, if you'd permit me, your attire this Sunday morning. It is as if it were Wednesday or Tuesday. I admired that. People eat first with their eyes. It told me a whole lot. The and if we all do what we got to do, wherever we are, large, medium, or small, as professionally and as seriously and as earnestly as we should, then we'll all be better off for it as a people. One Alicia. of the things we say in the business is that you're only as good as your last performance and every day must be treated as the beginning of a new recording. God bless you all. <laughs>